How's it going everybody? Today we're diving back into Mystery Mask, The Immortal Soul. Over the last couple of weeks, I've had the chance and the opportunity to play in a couple of beta tests. The first beta test was PvE only, and the second beta test did include PvP. I didn't partake in any of the PvP activities, and I chose to continue playing on the PvE route. What's up everybody? My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. I have to tell you that I've been infatuated with this game since I got access. You see, a couple of weeks ago, this game kind of fell into my lap, and I was offered the opportunity to play this game during the early testing stages. Now, most of the times when I pick up games that are in their early testing stages, I'm not real excited about the games. You see, they lack a lot of content, they lack a lot of systems, and I'm not saying that Mystery Mask is perfect, it still has a lot of work that needs to be done, however there are layers on top of layers on top of layers of systems that are already built into the game and that function really well. And this is just a beta test, it's not even like they've launched it to early access. I've seen games launched to early access mainly in the survival category that are far less polished than Mystery Mask The Immortal Soul. Now the second beta only closed two Two days ago and I'm already itching to get my hands on the next iteration. I think it's going to be some time before we see another beta as they had a lot of feedback from the last playtest that they're going to take back and continue development based on that feedback. But like I said, I'm really excited for this game and I really think this is going to be a great addition to the survival genre. Now I've had the chance to talk with some of the developers and get some questions answered which I'm going to cover a little bit later on in the video. However, before I get too deep into this, if you are interested in playing a future beta, I've put the link to their Discord and their website in the description of this video. That's the best place you can go to get information on future beta testing. You'll also find a link to their Steam page down there, so if you want to head over to Steam and wishlist this game to keep it on your radar, that's there as well. So like I said, I've been a part of a couple of beta tests. The first beta test I actually only had available to me for about two days, and then the second one was a week. And in that time, I played this game for about 87 hours. And like I said earlier, I'm already itching to get back into this game. There's just so much available to explore and do in this game that I feel like the short amount of time that we had wasn't enough. But there were a lot of players that put in a lot more time than I did, up to 200 hours. Many people in the 150 to 200 range are talking in the Discord about wanting to get access again. That's how much people are already invested in this game because it has the foundations for a game that could be absolutely amazing when it releases. And I have plans to cover this game through development and once it launches, I will be uploading guides for this game as well. So if you're interested in more Mystery Mask content, definitely subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get notified when I upload those videos. So like I said earlier, I had the chance to talk to the developers a little bit and ask them some questions. So I asked if there were going to be a future beta tests, and they said, absolutely, there will be beta tests in the future. You can stay tuned for more information information over on their discord like I said earlier and that link is in the description. I wanted to know whether the future beta tests would have single player modes active. You see the first beta test that I was in had a single player mode but the second beta test only had online servers. They are currently not sure what mode they are going to be testing and at what times in the future. But like I said the first test did have the single player mode and there will definitely be a single player mode once the game launches to early access access. And that brings me to my first balance issue. Now do keep in mind that this is a beta test and everything is subject to change. But I feel like this game is definitely not balanced for solo play. There are some people that will disagree with me on that fact, but I find this game very difficult to play as a solo. And if you have a single player mode, I feel like there really needs to be a path to achieving all the content in this game in a single player style. Now that doesn't have to be achieved by just straight nerfing enemies or bosses or anything like that, but some over leveling could be achieved or maybe some extra grinding to get you that specific part or piece that's going to give you the edge in combat when you step into the arena in single player. And I think that could probably be achieved by ungating my favorite feature in the game. 
My favorite feature happens to be with the tribesmen and being able to control them. You see, the tribesmen are like thralls if you're familiar with Conan Exiles. You're able to bring them back to your base and use them as followers or as workers on your benches. Once you unlock control, you're actually able to use them as your player character. So as you can see on the screen right now, I'm a red-headed character, but that's not the character that I initially started with. I started with a different character, and I am playing the game as this tribesman. It's a really cool feature and a really fun way to engage in the content because all those tribesmen have different attributes and different abilities. Unfortunately, this feature is locked behind the Sabertooth boss. That's the only way that you can unlock it is by defeating that first boss. And I feel like that fight is definitely not suited for most solo players. I'm an average player at best, and I know I would have a really hard time defeating that boss. Now in the beta, there are some things missing from combat, in my opinion, some audible cues and some visual cues to let you know when certain attacks are coming. And I asked them about the combat system and what kind of combat they were looking to achieve. And basically their response was that combat is meant to lean towards souls-like interactions. Managing stamina, performing blocks, and perfect parries will be a thing that you will have to master in Mystery Mask, the Immortal Soul. And for my interaction with the game, I can tell you that if you are not engaging in these tactics in combat, it can be very brutal. It definitely already feels like it has the Souls-like combat in the game. So one of the main things that I'm hoping they focus on with this development cycle is the fine tuning of the combat system, just making it feel more fluid, giving you the ability to see those attacks and hear the audible cues so that you can actually react in the proper way to those attacks coming. And that may fix my issue with the solo player not being able to really engage in a lot of this content unless they're high level skilled players. Additionally, the dev said in the discord that they're hasn't been much sound design, if any sound design, added to the game yet. Most of the sounds that you hear in game right now during the beta are going to be placeholders. So once they pass through it with the sound design, I think the combat system will be a lot better. So you might be wondering, like I am, how much content there actually is in the game. And I asked them what the expected amount of time to complete the game was. They said they expected the amount of time it would take to complete the main objective of the game was about 400 hours. I think that's vastly underestimated as I have 87 hours being played between the two beta tests and I've only scratched the surface of what's actually there. Sure, you might be able to do it in about 400 hours if you were just rushing the main content, but there's so much more to explore with this game. That led me to asking them how big the map was, and while they couldn't provide me with the actual size of the map, it is rather large. I know I didn't even explore half the map, and there was multiple times where I'd place a marker somewhere I hadn't been, and that marker would be over 3,000 kilometers away. So there's definitely lots to explore. And I was told that the original visible area on the map is one twelfth the size of the entire map, which means that this map is absolutely enormous. And it's likely to grow through future DLCs. There are plans to bring DLCs in the future to this game with new gameplay loops and new areas on the map. It's really early to say what the full view of those DLCs will be, but the developers are planning to support the game with future DLCs. They are also considering adding modding support for the game because it was a highly requested feature during the beta tests. And the game is being developed on Unreal Engine 4, and I'm sure there's already a lot of people out there that have the skills and the knowledge to jump right into that dev editor and make some really cool mods. One of the things that was brought up during my live stream that I didn't have an answer for, just opinions, was about nudity in the game. And I asked them directly whether they felt like that was going to be something that they added. And they said nudity is actually a feature that they are considering for the game. They have not yet decided if it will be present in the future of this title, but there are some things present in the game that tell me it could be added easily. 
I can't show those on YouTube because even though it's not nudity, I think YouTube would take issue with it. So there is a possibility that that will come to the game in the future. Like I said, that's up for debate right now. Now, for the most part, I find the game systems and the UI and the menus pretty easy to navigate, but there are some tricky little things that the game doesn't tell you, or at least didn't in the beta. Like the fact that the tribesmen are actually better than your character is, and likely going to be better than your character can ever be. I'm not sure if that's by design or just the way the beta was set up, but it looks to me like the gameplay loop is going to be going and finding the better tribesmen and then using those tribesmen to always get into higher level areas. And that's something the game doesn't really tell you all that well. However, once you figure that out and you are able to capture the better tribesmen, you will find that that really unlocks the possibilities of pushing higher higher level content. And tribesmen are absolutely vital in every area of this game, from playing as them as the character when you control them, to crafting and base defense. Every area of this game is going to get better when you have tribesmen and you have them doing specific things for you. One of the things that this game requires is that somebody is working on a bench to craft the items. So it's either you or a tribesman that you have recruited and brought back to your base. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty grindy early on to be on the bench all the time crafting the things that you need. So tribesmen are a must in this game. Honestly, I'd like to see them change it where things would craft. Just if you weren't on there, they could make it so it crafts really slow. But I feel like that is honestly kind of a way that they want to keep you in the game. The developer of this game has some experience with mobile games. So I have a feeling like they're taking some of that knowledge and trying to inject it into this game so that they can keep you playing longer through some of these tactics. And there's other things that they use to bring you back on the game, like the decay system. I feel like that time that you're allowed to spend away from the game is really short before your base starts to decay. And then additionally, you have to feed all your tribesmen. So there's a lot of things working to keep you playing the game for as long as possible and to make you log in as often as possible to this game. So I am hoping to see some of those systems change at least a little bit to make it a bit less grindy and then make you feel like it's okay to step away from the game, take a break, go to work, and do the things you would normally do in a week without worry of losing a whole bunch of progress in Mystery Mask the Immortal Soul. Now I hear it a lot and I say it a lot as well. We're always looking for that next great survival game. And honestly, I feel like this game has the potential to be that next great survival game. So I would recommend at this point in time, at least wish listing it on Steam, keep it on your radar, and then subscribe to the channel right here for future updates about what's going on with this game. Don't forget to whack the like button on the way out and let me know in the comment section below what game are you currently playing. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. I've got a new series going on my channel right now, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide for Conan Exiles, and you can watch that by clicking the video on the screen right now.